against Olympique Lyonnais at the camp now in the Champions League round of 16. Later on, we'll be hearing from FC Barcelona first team manager Ernesto Valverde, but we're starting with Arthur, who's the guy who you can see in the images at the moment. The first question comes from Barca TV. Talking about the good results since the first leg against Lyon. And asking if they're specifically concentrated because of some of the unusual results so far in the Champions League round of 16. Boa tarde. Então, é... Yeah, we're very focused. We know about the difficulties involved in the Champions League and all the pressure that's involved. It's very important to know about the risks uh, that we could face against a team that has high hopes of making it into the quarterfinals. So we need to play as well as we possibly can. Hola, Artur. ¿Qué tal? Buenas tardes. Adrián Alves de la Cadena Ser. Ha salido de una lesión hace poco. You came out of an injury not long ago. Forty-eight hours before the game in the Clasico, you were at a party with Neymar. Do you regret that? I think so. You know, sometimes life has these ups and downs. But I wanted to go there, but I'm also aware of my responsibilities, whether it's with the team. I knew what I was doing, but I, I apologize if anybody was upset by that. It's a process that my teammates have helped me with a lot, and I'm very grateful to the technical commission and the club management as well who've always shown a lot of concern about me. It was a difficult time, but then the joy came afterwards that I recovered from my injury, and I'm grateful to everybody at the club. I'm doing the best I can. I know I have to improve a lot on a personal level as a person. When I've needed help, I've always received that help. The club has kept me calm, and I'm very happy to be here at Barca. It's honourable that you recognise your errors, but also you've done some great things. The game against Spurs at Wembley was a particularly great game. Is the Champions League something very special to you? And can you speak about your prospects of winning it? The Champions League is a very special competition. I'd never played in it before. Wembley was a wonderful sensation for me. I'd never felt that excitement in a game before. I really learned what the Champions League is all about. I'm really enjoying it. I'm very focused on the Champions League. We, we don't treat this differently to every game because we're fully focused on every game. But yes, the Champions League would be something very special to win. Talking about the 5-1 against Madrid, that was a great game for you. Tomorrow's a no-way-out fixture. Are you dreaming of one of your big European nights? Mm. 
Well, I've been looking forward to this moment for a long time. It's the biggest competition in the world. The most important, too. It's going to be a big spectacle tomorrow. <coughs> We'll clearly all be giving everything we can. We're clearly stronger playing in our own stadium and with the best players on the pitch, I'm sure we're capable of winning, but we know how difficult it is. We know there's a lot of pressure on us. We know there's a lot of responsibility, but we'll be doing everything we can to get a good result. You're obviously very close to Coutinho. Can you tell us something about his mood? He's a great player. I think he's one of the best players in the world. He knows that there are some games where perhaps he hasn't played his best football. But those of us who know him well know what he's capable of and what a great player he is and how much he can help this team. So we have to trust him as much as possible and allow him to develop his best game. You're a good friend of Neymar's. Do you think he could end up at Real Madrid? It's an option for him that he could think about. He'd need to speak to his family about it. As a friend, I just wish him the very best. I don't know what he'll choose to do. Maybe he'll stay at PSG. He could go to another club. Me as a friend, all I can do is wish him the very best in the world. There's no more I can do. It's not me who signs pieces of paper. I don't know where he'll end up next season. You're a regular starter in the team. People view you as a very important part of when Barca plays well. How do you feel to be so important here to the coach and to the fans? It's difficult to deal with all that because it's just a dream. And it's not something I ever expected would happen to be here with such great players. Then also here with my family, the way the fans have treated me. They've also shown patience waiting for me to find my best game. But I also know what responsibilities are involved. I need to live up to all the expectations that were put on my shoulders. But everything that's happening here is wonderful. Uh, you can't be fooled into thinking that you've done everything. You need to keep your head cold, keep working. And I know that I can still improve on a day-to-day -day basis. Do you think Barca's football is very different depending on whether you are on the field or not? FC Barcelona has its own style of play regardless of who is playing. Football fans, of course, know that every player has his individual characteristics. I play for Barca, I know how the team plays, but I've always played to win, so I'm suited to that. I've got the same kind of DNA that this club has. 
en algún momento se, se, se hablaba de quién iba a ocupar ese, ese puesto, porque estaba Busquets, estaba Rakitic, o Artur o Arturo Vidal. ¿Cómo ha sido para ti competir en el buen sentido de la palabra con un jugador con la experiencia de, de Arturo Vidal, tú siendo tan joven? Estoy hablando de competir con un experienced player como Arturo Vidal para un lugar en el equipo. It's a privilege for me to play next to such great players, not just Arturo, but other great players too. I'm still young, so I've got a lot to learn, and I will learn a lot from playing alongside such great players. I feel very privileged to feel part of this club. Uh, to be young and living alongside people on a day-to-day -day -day basis is very, very good for my development. I also understand the responsibilities involved. But, of course, there's competition for places, but we're all sharing... Uh, our roles in the team, both on and off the field. Uh, ultimately, we're friends, so is the coach. He's a friend too, and he's also helping me a lot. Real Madrid and PSG have gone out. Atletico Madrid or Juventus could go out later on today. So, do you think it helps your chances of winning the title to see such important teams falling by the wayside? Madrid and PSG are big teams, yes, and they haven't qualified, but the teams that beat them have played better. They deserve to win. So we have to respect the teams that are in this competition. <coughs> First of all, Lyon, that's our opponent tomorrow. We're very focused on this game, totally concentrated on this game. We are expecting a lot from Lyon. We know it's going to be very hard to win. Asking about his fitness coming out of injury. He was replaced at half-time the other day, for example. How, are you ready to play 90 minutes tomorrow? Everybody knows that when you come back from an injury, it takes some time to get back into your rhythm. An injury is an injury, but I feel good. I feel recovered and 100% ready to play 90 minutes. I thank all the physios, the therapists, everybody, the doctors who've helped me get through this difficult period. When I needed them the most, they've helped me. They've done everything to get me back to full fitness much quicker than expected. So I'm very, very grateful to them for all their work. I'm ready to play 90, 95 minutes if I have to. OK, thank you very much. That's the end of Arthur's press conference. But don't go away because we've got Ernesto Valverde speaking in probably about five minutes time from now. Que s'espera aconseguir un bon resultat per plantar-se al Barça a la següent ronda de la Champions. Sí, a mi m'ha agradat molt també la resposta sobre la Champions, que diu, per mi és la primera vegada que competeixo a la màxima competició europea i justament recordava el partit contra el Tottenham a Wembley, diu, aquell moment d'entrar al terreny de joc i de viure, potser, no?, l'himne de la Champions, l'ambient, diu que és un moment que no oblidarà mai a la vida i és veritat que aquesta temporada l'està vivint de manera especial perquè és un equip molt gran aquí a Europa i, a més a més, en aquesta competició que no sé què té, que posa la pell de gallina. Doncs li van haver, eh, aquesta bona sensació, perquè jo crec que tots recordem, Artur, el millor moment o els culers realment descobrim i ens enamorem d'Artur a aquest partit, eh, a Wembley, amb el Tottenham. Per tant, entenc que que ell ho visqui així i seria bo que recuperés una mica d'aquestes sensacions per demà. Tant de bo al Camp Nou accepti aquesta crida que està fent tothom perquè hi hagi el Caliu 
no sé si serà el mateix, que ens costarà fer el mateix que diu que tenen allà, però com a mínim apropar-nos perquè també farà falta el públic demà. Sí, jo crec que la cosa bona que té Artur és que un gran escenari no l'impressiona. És a dir, la Champions realment la disfruta, no el fa petit, i ell s'expressa de la mateixa manera. Li ha anat molt ràpid la carrera, ell a Gremio guanya la Libertadores també d'aquesta manera, fent-se en grans escenaris, i a vegades que el Barça veiem que falta un procés o o alguns mesos perquè els jugadors siguin capaços de fer-se seus aquests escenaris, sembla que Artur no li ha fet falta i ja no li farà. Sí, sobretot això que comentes, que se'l veu molt relaxat a la sala de premsa, que no noten aquest sentit la pressió, tenint en compte que és tan jove, és veritat que al Brasil estan acostumats a jugar grans partits, partits importants, però se l'ha vist molt còmode. Molt, 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 i el camp també ho fa veure. És un futbolista que, diguem, que no li crema la pilota i quan s'equivoca no deixa de demanar-la, que això s'agraeix molt quan tens un company d'aquests a l'equip, que dius, li puc donar perquè me'n refio, no? Ho parlàvem ara, que és un futbolista que els jo crec que els companys se'n refien, però a més a més, si la perd, continua demanant-la i és una assegurança. Li han preguntat ell mateix que com canviava el Barça quan ell jugava i quan no. Evidentment que ell mateix no pot valorar-ho perquè és molt humil i a més a més seria complicat com a jugador en aquesta posició, però Sergi, tu com a expert, què canvia el Barça quan tenim Artur a l'11 i quan no? Per mi sí, canvia. Jo crec que és un jugador que ajunta la resta de peces i en això Valverde viu obsessionat pràcticament des del primer dia que va arribar a Barcelona. Va dir, jo vull un equip junt, junt quan pressioni, junt quan hagi de replegar, junt quan hagi de tenir la pilota i crec que això Artur t'ho garanteix. En la sortida de pilota és capaç d'acostar-se a la base del joc i no perdre la pilota, donar continuïtat i aconseguir sortir. Quan s'ha de pressionar, potser físicament no és un jugador tan preparat, però per intel·ligència sí, és capaç d'anar amb l'equip i crec que tot això a nivell de dinàmica col·lectiva l'equip ho sent i quan ha faltat jo l'he trobat a faltar. Molt bé, recordeu que estem pendents de la roda de premsa de l'entrenador Ernesto Valverde. Ja hem escoltat a Artur i mentre no sentim Ernesto Valverde seguim parlant d'aquesta Champions. Content que serà titular, Artur, demà, no? Això li hem de preguntar a l'entrenador. Ara creus que ho aclarirà? Possible pregunta per Valverde. Jo diria que no ho aclarirà, però tenint en compte el canvi de l'altre dia del descans al partit, deixant Arturo tot el partit, a mi em sorprendria que fos Arturo Vidal l'escollit i no Artur, jo crec que serà titular demà i anirà una mica amb aquesta línia, no? El que ja veig una mica... I Artur i Artur, els dos. Fins i tot Artur en una posició més avançada. I Rakitic a... No, Busquets, Rakitic, Artur... I Arturo. Arturo, Suárez, Messi. Estàs invitat. Jo estic preguntant, jo pregunto. Jo pregunto, jo pregunto. Jo no sé res. No, no, no. Això es podria veure en un romba, no? Però jo el que veig més avançat en aquest dibuix és Arturo Vidal. Fins i tot jo Artur no l'apartaria de Busquets perquè crec que és una pota pel futbolista de Badia que sempre l'ajuda a sortir de rivals que et mosseguen com segurament o probablement el Lió demà faci. Si fa això serà difícil d'encaixar-ho, eh? I jo crec que el Lió tindrà un cacau per defensar-ho important perquè amb aquests quatre centrecampistes jo crec que, bé, sobretot Rakitic seria el que més s'adapta perquè Rakitic s'adapta absolutament a tot, però Arturo i Artur per allà dins sense tenir un perfil massa clar de qui va a l'esquerra, de qui és mitja punta... Jo diria que no, eh, Mario, però no sé, al millor ens estàs descobrint aquí. No, no, jo no sé res, jo dic que pregunto. Tenim incògnites perquè estem pendent també de l'evolució d'Ausman Dembélé, que recordem que pateix una petita elongació a la cuixa de la cama esquerra, per tant, no sabem si comptarem amb aquest jugador o no, que també és important per determinar l'11. Si no comptéssim amb ell, podria semblar-se també, per exemple, l'alineació del partit contra el Tottenham, que estàvem parlant ara. Veieu, sí que era Rakitic, Busquets i Artur, i al davant es va jugar amb Messi, Suárez, Coutinho, que seria una altra de les alternatives i de les opcions. Jo crec que és la que serà, no? Valverde tampoc no és molt amic de fer invents en el dia clau. Gens, no? Gens, gens. I és cert que Dembélé Coutinho et canvia el perfil del tercer home, però no et canvia l'estructura i el bloc. I entenc que la cosa aniria per aquí. A més, l'equip està acostumat a jugar així. Normalment, quan no juga Dembélé, juga Coutinho i Valverde és bastant així. A mi em sorprendria que fos una altra cosa. I jo també, no? Però, clar, ara entra la incògnita que ha tirat aquí el Mario Robert, que igual és un analista aquí amagat. No, no, això és que no. Però... Ja m'agradaria, ja. És que, clar, al final, el dubte que tens és... El dubte que tens és amb la baixa de Dembélé, que crec que és una baixa sensible i de la que l'Olímpic... Veuré, perquè ara no és segura, eh? La tenim aquí una miqueta a sobre de la taula. Tant de bo que no, tant de bo que no, perquè seria una bona notícia que hi fos al final. Però el problema ara per Valverde és tornar a insistir amb un Coutinho, que probablement ell, si tingués a Dembélé, no hi comptaria només i exclusivament pel seu rendiment, perquè evidentment és un futbolista que et pot donar molt, però clar, tenint en compte com està, 
apostar per ella ara, tenint en compte també el que he parlat del perfil Valverde, que no és els dies grans, doncs no mou gaires coses i va molt sobre segur, és un dia perquè Coutinho tingui una responsabilitat i un pes i agafi la pilota d'una manera que li estem demanant de fa temps i que no ho ha fet, en un escenari complicat, tant de bo sigui un punt d'inflexió per ell també, que ens aniria fantàstic. Defensant una miqueta Coutinho, sí que és veritat que sense anar més lluny, parlàvem d'aquest partit del Barça al camp del Tottenham, Coutinho va marcar, va fer un gran partit, i el dia del Sevilla, que el Barça també necessitava remuntar la Copa, va estar molt bé, va marcar dos gols i molt participatiu en l'equip. És un futbolista que a les grans cites, en tot cas, sembla que es creix. I encertant un penal en aquell moment, que també a vegades la pressió que tenia a sobre, de tants partits dient-li que no marcava i tot, era bastant gran. Sí, jo crec que estem en un moment de descrèdit en què el rendiment fa difícil que Coutinho tingui un suport per part de la massa social, però entenc que ell ha de conviure en això i que algun dia ha de fer aquest clic. Qui sap si demà, no sé, l'Olímpic de Lió també és un rival que si juga amb en Don Belé i amb Aguar, ja vam veure que a vegades desprotegeix aquesta zona esquena dels migcampistes, que crec que incentiva més les aparicions de Coutinho que les de Don Belé, perquè Coutinho és un jugador que va cap a dins, que si et rep en aquesta zona de la mitja punta es pot treure un xut perquè el té, no ho sé. Jo crec que ell juga juga en una posició molt idònia per ell, perquè li permet anar cap a dins, perquè li obre el carril a Jordi Alba, perquè el Barça pot aglutinar futbol per allà, perquè viu a prop de Messi, que al final és un jugador amb el qual s'ha d'entendre la força amb la qualitat que té, però ara mateix anímicament no se'l veu connectat. Això en algun moment canviarà, no sabem quan. Bé, esperem doncs a veure si demà té una gran oportunitat, un gran escenari com és el Camp Nou, on a més a més el Barça acostuma a marcar i contra un rival que defensivament està molt feble. A més a més té la baixa de Marcelo, que es va lesionar el minut 17 de l'últim partit contra l'Estrasburg, que ha viatjat a Barcelona. Veurem, estarem pendents de l'entrenament avui de l'Olímpic, el Camp Nou, a veure si s'entrena o no. Doncs anem a veure primer Valverde. Aquí està, l'entrenador del Barça. Ernesto Valverde, l'escoltem. Bona tarda a tothom. Ok, well, here we are back in the press room here at the Ciutat Esportiva Joan Gampa. And... A very happy, smiling, looking Ernesto Valverde there in your image. He's about to give his pre-Olympic Lyonnais press conference. De Barça TV. Volia preguntar-te si el resultat de la nada afecta el plantejament de l'Olympic de Lyon. The first question is whether you think Lyon might have a more of attacking or defensive attitude based on the nil-nil in the first leg. I don't know if that's going to affect Olympic Lyon or not. It doesn't worry me excessively either. Once we're out on the pitch, yes, of course it will, but at the moment, no. Nil-nil from the first leg means it's not a result that really benefits either side. And if neither of us score, then we'll go into extra time. Lyon will be coming here with their weapons. They've got a very strong attack. Very quick, powerful players up front. I'm sure they'll try to exploit that. They're a team that likes to take the initiative in their league. And it's not easy to change that from one day to another. They know how important it would be for them to get an away goal tomorrow, so I'm sure they'll look for that too. What have you spoken about most this week? Losing to Roma last year or Real Madrid losing to Ajax? Look, we're not worrying too much about what happened a year ago. We've spoken enough about that. We're just worried about tomorrow's game. Last year happened. The other Champions League games are very important to appreciate what the other teams are like, and it's a reminder that there are no small teams. And also that the result of the first leg doesn't always matter for much. You've seen some big turnarounds in the games last week. But in our case, it's a very balanced result from the first leg. We have to win tomorrow if we want to qualify. Any result that 
Leon got in the group stage, any of those results would have been good because they they didn't lose any game and the the games that drew were all score draws. La prova que se li faci avui a Dembélé és per saber si s'arrisca a... Dembélé and his fitness, are you... Is he being tested to see whether he's in the squad or whether he's starting the game? Well, first, we've got to work out exactly how he is and then we can decide if he's OK. If he's not OK, then clearly he won't be playing. Yeah, it's a decisive game. But we're not going to start with one player and then have to make a substitution early on in the game. Uh, or to bring him on later in the game and then have to make another substitution. That would be no good either. So we don't know how this game is going to be, whether it will be decided in the first five minutes or the last five minutes. We'll have to wait and see how the tests go with him today and then we'll make our decision based on that. De Bin Sports. Hemos visto que el Barça ha dado un paso adelante en todos los partidos en los que necesitaba darlo, por ejemplo, después de perder ante el Levante en Copa del Rey. Ante... Barça came from behind against Levante, against Sevilla. Hemos visto un carácter muy fuerte del equipo. When the team has had to, there's a very clear and determined attitude in the team. Another 90 minutes, anything could happen. There will be moments when things go well, moments when things don't. We could lose a player after five minutes. The opponent could lose a player after five minutes. It all depends on how the game unfolds. But we're just aiming to play a good game, push our way towards the opposing goal, uh, do a good job in front of our fans, what we always do. We always raise our, put our heads up and we always take games on. Entiende que debería tener una charla o animar especialmente a Coutinho. Do you think you need to have a special word with Coutinho uh, to stop his head from dropping too low, from his morale from dropping? The way we deal with things behind closed doors are a private matter for me and my players. But we always try to build the confidence of our players. Sometimes we need to speak to players, sometimes we don't. We've got high hopes for Gautinho. Hola Ernesto Martiaga, de Abel.com. Antes has hablado del peligro ofensivo del Olympique. You mentioned Olympique's offensive pressure. Dembélé, the Lyon Dembélé, he scored four goals in in four games, I think, was a stat he just gave. So is he uh, the biggest concern? Well, he's the striker, he's a dangerous player, a strong player, but they've got other players. They've got Aftekir, Depay Traoré, there's Cornet, there's Terrier as well. Uh, he played very well the other day. They've got the kind of players that can score goals regardless of uh, what Dembélé does. Bonjour, Gaffard Daron pour la newspaper du Pôle de Saint-Nuit. Quand je sens la même pregunta, est-ce que alguns partits el jugueu a la defensiva? Demà jugareu més a l'atac? Sometimes you might play more defensively. Tomorrow you're going to play attack-wise. What are your orders going to be to your players? Uh, having played some very difficult games in recent weeks. I don't quite understand the question, he says. Neither did I, to be honest. What do you mean? Uh, a defensive team? You mean Lyon or, or us? Us? Uh, we, don't, we don't play defensively, but we do try to keep things tight at the back. Bonjour, David Sandona de France. David Sandona de France Television, desde la elimination du PSG davant du Manchester. Since PSG went out to Man United, a lot of people are talking about that and about Zinedine Zidane becoming uh, Real Madrid manager and perhaps not about your game. Well, every day people speak about different things in football. 
con respecto a todo lo que me preguntas, eh, está claro que el, el que caigan eliminados equipos como el Real Madrid, como el Paris Saint Germain. If teams like Real Madrid and PSG are going out of the Champions League, that's important. It shows that surprises can happen. We need to keep an eye on things. We know that PSG are a very big uh, club. And that teams, such big teams, have gone out of the competition does mean that we have to be careful. <coughs> As for Zidane, he's a great manager. That's all I can say. Going to a great club. And they're going to be our rivals. Uh, I look forward to playing against him. Barca created lots of chances but didn't score against Lyon in the first leg. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sorry, seems to have lost the signal there. I don't know if we're going to be getting it back in a moment. Well, apologies for that. Uh, we seem to have lost connection with the Sportiva.